Hey Tech Heads, Fina here. Today, we're going to look at something super important battery preheating in electric cars, specifically in the MG4. So a lot of you have been asking me about this in the comments section of some of my videos, especially now with the cold season upon us, this becomes even more important. So you see, when I got my first electric car, well, I had no idea how important battery temperature was. But after testing out different scenarios and really coming to understand how it all works together, I have to say it can make a huge difference in your daily driving. So today I'm going to show you everything that I've learned about MG4 battery preheating, as well as give you some tips that you can really apply in other cars as well. And believe me, some of these things definitely might surprise you. So let's take a closer look. Okay, the first thing I want to point out is that the MG4 actually has two completely software-based heating systems, battery heating systems. And this is really important to understand, so let's break it down a little bit. The MG4's battery heating power is up to seven kilowatts, which is quite a lot of power. Now, the first system is the intelligent battery heating, and you'll find this icon in the infotainment menu under the battery slash energy consumption tab. Now, what's great about this is that it only works when your car is running. So once you turn it on in settings, it will stay on until you manually turn it off again. And when it's on, the battery heater will start whenever the battery temperature drops to 10 degrees or lower. And we're going to talk about why that's really great just a little bit later in the video. There's also a second battery preheating system, which you can turn on via MG's iSmart app. And this one only works when the car is off. It's going to be hidden under the scheduled charging button and it has a scheduling option. MG itself highlights in the app that it should turn on an hour before you're scheduled to leave. Now, according to user experience, this is the truth for MG4s with an LFP battery. If you have the NMC version, then 30 minutes is just enough. And that brings me to the next thing that I wanna talk about, which is something really interesting about different types of batteries. And this is quite important because it can affect how you plan your preheat. So look, if you have an LFP battery, you'll want to start preheating even earlier than you might think. We're talking an hour or more if it's really cold outside. And that's because these batteries take longer to change temperature, and maybe also because the LFP battery has more weight than the NMC at the same capacity. So it's like trying to heat a bigger cup of coffee. It just takes a bit longer, you know? Now, battery temperature isn't just about convenience or range. It's actually also about the long-term battery protection. So when you put a load on a cold battery, like during you know, very fast acceleration, it is not ideal for its health. Kind of like trying to run a sprint without warming up first. Sure, you can do it, but it is not ideal for your body or for your performance for that matter. Now, the cool thing is that once the battery is warm, it stays that way for quite a long time. So that's why the timing of the preheat can really make such a huge difference. Okay, let's see how this works in real life. Personally, I like practical examples, so let's break down common situations. Say you're just going to the grocery store, it's maybe two kilometers away, and it's eight degrees outside. The battery heater turns on when you turn on the car because we have set the infotainment on for intelligent battery heating and we have met the battery condition below 10 degrees. In such a short journey, this won't manage to heat the battery and we will really only increase our consumption because the battery heater will run at the full seven kilowatts. The cabin heater will also run at full, but it probably won't be able to heat the cabin either. So here's a tip I discovered. If you want to save as much energy as possible, it's really better to just use the heated steering wheel and heated seats for this short trip. They will warm up much faster and they use less energy than the main heater. And of course, have the intelligent battery heating turned off for short journeys because there's just 
no point. So there were big complaints about the MG Force consumption in the beginning when it first started coming out, precisely because users had this system on when they were just going on short routes with a cold battery. And as we already established, that's really just wasting your energy. Now, it's a different matter if you plan to do a lot of short trips in one day. Then it's definitely worth preheating the battery in the morning before you leave, ideally, and it will stay warm throughout the day that you plan to ride, and that will, of course, have a positive impact on your consumption. Now let's take a look at something pretty cool regarding longer journeys, especially when there is traffic. So finding this out has completely changed my perspective on energy consumption in winter. Now, imagine this scenario. You're driving to work, it's about five kilometers away, but because of the morning rush hour traffic, it takes you 45 minutes instead of the usual 15. So let's break down the numbers here. Driving alone maybe uses about one kilowatt hour. But check this out, the cabin heater uses almost two kilowatt hours during that 45 minute journey. The intelligent battery heating, which is on, uses another three kilowatt hours or so because it's below 10 degrees outside and the battery has obviously cooled overnight. Now we often forget that it takes a lot of energy to warm up cold air or a cold battery and keep it at that temperature no matter how far you drive. It's really not about distance, it's about time. Okay, so here are my top tips based on everything that we've discussed. For really short trips, consider using just heated seats and a heated steering wheel instead of doing a full cabin heating. It's much more energy efficient. If you're planning multiple short trips in cold weather, be sure to preheat the battery ideally before your very first trip and that heat will carry you through several trips over that day. For trips longer than 55 miles, preheating is almost always worthwhile, especially when it's cold outside. And just remember that LFP batteries do need more time to warm up, so give them at least 30 or more like 60 minutes when it's really cold outside. So those are just a few useful tips about battery heating in the MG4. I tried to break down all the technical stuff while keeping it practical based on actual use. Now many thanks to the user fnegroni on the mgevs.com forum for all the practical information on MG4 operation. And remember, this is not just about comfort or range, it is about your long-term battery care. Once you understand how all of this works together, the preheat, the cabin heat, and battery type, you can make much better decisions about when and how to use these features. Please let me know in the comments if you do have any questions. I am always happy to answer or just to chat. And as always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe. It really helps the channel. Thank you all for watching and I will catch you next time.